God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We have gathered here this afternoon in Mountjoy Presbyterian Church to thank God for the life of Mr. Matthew John Matty Brawley. Matthew lived a full life, and so the family have asked that this would be a celebration of Matthew's nearly 27 years. And so we come with that attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all that Matthew was and all that he meant to each one of us, to his family, to you, Arlene, and Mark, and Jordan, and to his grandparents, uh, Billy and Florian, and to his aunts and uncles, and to his friends from Southwest College at Oma Centre, and Ardley, and his neighbours, and his friends. We have gathered, and if you look at the front cover of their order of service, we have that lovely picture, and Matthew's cheeky grin, <laughs> that lovely smile, that he could get away with anything, just because he could smile like that. And so that's the smile we want to remember today. We want to remember all that was good and true and all that uh, Matthew achieved in life. Matthew lived a full life. And that's what we want to celebrate today. So I was speaking to some of his friends outside and they said, Matthew was never off the go. <laughs> he was always going somewhere. He was even going on holidays abroad in a few weeks' time. Uh, just two weeks ago he was at his formal all dressed up in tuxedo and everything, and so he lived a life of fullness. And so we thank God today for Matthew's life and all that he meant to us. Matthew loved music, and so today our songs, we're going to do our best, even though it's a sad occasion, we're going to do our best to be cheerful and to rejoice. And so the family have chosen this lovely hymn based on Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, I love him. So let's all stand together and sing to God's praise.
Let's come to God now in prayer. Let us all pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that indeed you are the good shepherd. We thank you that you care for us, that you know us and you love us. And so we gather in your presence today. We come today with our heavy hearts at the loss of Matthew, the one that we have known and loved. And we come to seek your help, to seek your grace and to know your peace in the midst of our pain. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are ever present with us, that you're our refuge and strength. You alone are the light of the world. And so we pray that you would shine your light, the light of your love, into our pain and loss. Today we look at death straight on, but we are reminded that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ, not even death itself. And we thank you for Jesus, who died on a cross to take away our sins, whose hands were nailed to a Roman cross for all our sinfulness. But we thank you that the cross did not have the final say, and the grave did not have the final say, and that Jesus rose from death to eternal life, and because he rose, we that put our trust in him will rise also to new life. And so our confidence today is in Jesus Christ, in his death, and in his rising again. Father, we pray that Mark and Arlene, Jordan and Aaron and the Brawley and Thompson families would know your comfort and the assurance of your living presence. So come amongst us by your Holy Spirit and grant us the assurance that you are with us. And today we remember all Matthew's friends, his family, and may they know that you are with them now. We remember Matthew's life with gratitude we have all been enriched by his presence. We remember the love that he received from family and friend and neighbour and staff at Southwest College in Ardley in Oma County and the Boys Brigade in Oma Centre. But we also thank you for the love that he gave, a love that he gave to his parents and to his brother, a love that he gave to so many people. We thank you for his winsome smile, his positive outlook on life, and all that he achieved in life, and all that he did, we give you thanks. We remember how Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And so, Lord, help us to believe those words today. And so we commit this service into your hands, Lord. So be with us now by your Spirit. Bless each one of us and be present with us. And we ask this all for Jesus' glory. Amen. I'm going to read some verses from Scripture. And first of all, from Psalm number 31. This is God's Word. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all of my enemies I am utter contempt of my neighbours. I am in dread to my friends and all those who see me in the street flee from me. I am forgotten. I have become like broken pottery. But I trust in you, O Lord, and I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Then some words from Jesus recorded in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I am going there to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then some words as recorded in 1 John chapter 4. Words that remind us about what is really important in life. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. Amen. Matthew was blessed to grow up in a home surrounded by love. The love of parents, Arlene and Mark, and the love of his brother Jordan. The love of aunts and uncles and grandparents. The love of cousins. The love of so many in this community. The love of people at Arbeli and then at Southwest College where he went on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and the Oma Centre on Thursday and Friday. And Matthew was surrounded by love. But each of you were also surrounded by love. Because Matthew loved you and thought the world of you. And you know that. But I want to remind you of that today. And too, Jordan and Arlene and Mark. Matthew loved you so much. So today we remember the love that you gave and the love that you received. I'm going to invite uh, Jordan to come to the reading desk and share his thoughts and memories and a love to, to his brother, Matty. As a tribute to you, Matty, I wrote you this letter. Dear Matty, you gave us all quite a shock this week. I could never prepare myself for the news I got on Friday morning. But I'm writing this letter for you today to celebrate what you mean to everyone here and what you mean uh, to me, your brother Maggie. You're my big brother and I couldn't imagine life without you. I tortured you every chance I got, but our bond grew day by day and I would have done anything for you and I know in your special way you, you would have done it. You would have done the same for me. We shared some amazing times together while I was watching Pierce Brosnan and James Bond on repeat. Listen to Little Mix for hours. <laughs> or traveling the world together on our family holidays. It was a blast. And I think I can safely say you have the best set of the best travel set of wheels this world has ever seen. <laughs> I've never respected someone's strength, character, and enthusiasm for life as much as I have yours. You taught me so much about humility and compassion, which has shaped my character tenfold and it's something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life, so thank you for that. I miss you now, I will miss you tomorrow, and I'll miss you for the rest of my life, but you will never be forgotten, and I think I can speak for everyone here, that a little piece of you lives on in all of us. It was my privilege to be your wee brother, and I will cherish our memories forever, and we will be willing through life together until the end, or as easy little man. Thoughts and tribute to your big brother. And uh, he was the person who kept me right, was he? <laughs> A work in progress. <laughs> but we have gathered here to remember and to thank God for Matthew Matty, as he was called, for all of us. And the text I've taken today is from Psalm 131. My times are in your hands. And I want to focus on hands. First of all, Matthew's hands. 
Matthew's hands were clapping hands. Matthew got excited about everything. Or maybe it was only when he met me. Or when he met me. But he was at Christmas time, he was at our Christmas experience at the hall. I don't know who was the biggest child in there, but Matthew loved the donkey and meeting Mary and Joseph and all the games and activities, and he loved it. And his hands, every time I met Matthew, his hands were always going. He was just ready to jump out of that wheelchair if he could and get going, clapping hands, excited. He had creative hands. Now, I know, Mark, you've taken the credit for this, but uh, I think it was Matthew behind this. All those model airplanes. I think it was Matt who told me that Milton and not you. <laughs> Maybe you supervised, but uh, did you see them in his bedroom? Airplanes, boats, planes, helicopters, buses, ships. Someone said to me that that is a lovely spot for Matthew to be buried in right there. Because he loved cars and lorries and buses and tractors. And you can be sure Matthew will be grading them all. And he did that. It was one of his first questions he asked, what do you drive? And then he would tell you what he thought about it. <laughs> Whether you liked it or not. You see, Matthew was very creative. And he, his hands were creative, but he also had welcoming hands. Matthew loved to welcome people. He was a people person. And the fact that there's so many in this church today is testament to the welcome that Matthew gave to people. He loved people. And we remember birthday parties. He loved his birthdays. And he loved going to birthday parties. He was a welcoming person. But Matthew's hands were also giving hands. Matthew gave so much to you, Arlene, and to Mark, and to Jordan, and to the family. He gave so much. He gave you love. He gave you smiles. He gave you hugs. He could also give you insults. <laughs> but generally, Matthew was that loving, giving person. And so today we remember you and uh, Granny Flory and Granddad Billy. You've lost a, a lovely grandson. And to Earl and Elaine and Peter and Michelle, you've lost a loving nephew and to Richard and Gary and Sam and money you've lost a loving cousin and we surround you today with our love and prayers. So Matthew's hand is. But then as we move on the second group of hands that I want to think about are the hands that nurtured and helped Matthew. Arlene and Mark and Jordan. It is appropriate that on this day and on this occasion that we pay tribute to the care that you gave to Matthew, it was second to none. The fact that Matthew lived to 27 years of age, nearly 27, is testament to your love, to your care, to your working hands that nurtured Matthew and cared for him in every way. You gave exceptional care. You were there for him. You revolved your life around him. And today we simply say to you, well done. You did so much, and we acknowledge that today. Matthew enjoyed times together with you, whether it was car at the caravan at Port Rush, a holiday, uh, a trip to the shops. And Matthew had that knack, he would say to Arlene, I think you would like a cup of coffee out. <laughs> when all alone it was Matthew wanted a glass of coke. <laughs> yeah, that knack of twisting things around but you have great memories of time together. He even attended his formal just two weeks ago. It was nearly like everything was just lined up, but that was Matthew's time to go on Thursday morning. Jordan, you were that kind brother, helping Matthew, devoted brother. You were there for each other. And you look out for your brother. And so today we thank God for all that you did for your brother. Caring hands. Matthew received the caring, the kindness, and the supporting hands of so many in his life. 
Oma County School and then to Arbilly School and to Southwest College and to Oma Centre where people took Matthew into their hands and you nurtured him, you loved him, you supported him and you made him the young man that he is today. And so to you I say that you had a good friend in Matthew and Matthew had a good friend in each of you and you looked out for him and he looked out for you. Matthew also received exceptional care from the carers who called every day and that it enabled Matthew to live at home right to the very end. Morning and evening they were there with Matthew over the last number of years. And so they became part of Matthew's extended family and the family want to pay tribute to all those who cared for Matthew over the last number of years. You went the extra mile. Your love and care, your caring hands, your kind hands, ensured that Matthew had a good quality of life and that he was able to live life at home and live life to the full. As we continue on today, we have looked at Matthew's hands, we have looked at the family and the cares in his friends' hands. We now want to turn to God's hands. Because the psalmist said, my times are in thy hand. Isn't that a great expression and a great truth for us to hold on to today? And we don't know what the, the psalmist was experiencing in life, but we know it was difficult. In Psalm 31, which we read a few moments ago, we know that whatever he was going through, it was difficult. Listen to verse 9. I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish, my strength fails. I am a broken piece of pottery. Maybe that's how you feel today, in distress, sad and alone, broken, pain and experiencing loss. And if that's what, what you're facing today, well then you need to hear what the writer went on to say. He didn't give in to despair or despondency. And he said this, But I trust in you, Lord, and I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Because the psalmist didn't let distress or sorrow or darkness or dreariness or despondency or loss or pain have the final word and so today Matthew would not want those things to have the final say and so like the Sabbath we can say today but I trust in you O Lord I say you are my God and that my times are in your hands all of our days are in God's hands we're going to sing in a moment from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Because all of our days are in God's hands. All of our days, the good days, the bad days, the ordinary days, the days of trouble, the days of pain, the days of sorrow and the days of joy, we can place them into God's hands. And God's hands are the kind hands. that the hands that made this world from nothing. Jesus' hands were the kind hands that healed the leper, that fed the hungry, that befriended the lonely. And so it's into Jesus' hands that we place our lives. And Jesus' hands are the hands that were crucified. They were the hands that were nailed to a cross for Matthew. They were the hands that were nailed to a cross for each one of us to take away our sin and to offer us forgiveness. Jesus' hands indeed were kind hands. They're saving hands. And those hands of Jesus are extended to each one of us today. And Jesus puts his hand out to us today. And he would say, put your hand into my hand. And I will lead you all. I will lead you through life. One of the hymns puts it this way. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me on to be the light. 
And today, as you put your hands into God's hands, into the hands of Jesus, and as you see his nail-pierced hands, you know that you are in safe hands, that you are in the hands of our Saviour and Lord. So as you put your hands into Jesus' hands, he will lead you on. He will lead you to the light. He will lead you home to heaven. And isn't that a comforting word today for all of us? He's got the whole world in his hands. And he can put you in his hands and hold you. And he will carry you. And so we can say, my times are in your hand. My God, I place them there. And I leave them everything entirely to your care. My times are in your hand, O Lord. And then we can say, O Lord, I trust in you. And I will say that you are my God. What a difference that would make. We could do that today. Put our hands into the hands of God. My times are in your hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am bored. Through the storm. Through the night. Lead me on to the light. And that light is Jesus and he will lead us home. And then we will sit at the right hand of God. Forever. My times are in your hand. You are my God. And I trust in you. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Our Father God, we have met to celebrate the life of Matthew Broad. A life well lived. And today we celebrate his nearly 27 years of living. And how Matthew lived life to the full. Whether it was meeting his friends, going to the caravan at Portrush, going on holidays to Tenerife, meeting people at birthday parties, going to the college, going to his formal, Lord Matthew lived a full life. And we thank you for everything that was good and true about him. Lord, we come to you now, asking that you would comfort his family in their time of loss, that you would be with Mark and Arlene, Jordan and Aaron, his grandparents Billy and Flory, his aunt and uncles Errol, Elaine, Peter and Michelle, and his cousins Gary, Richard, Sam and Molly. Lord, in the suddenness of Matthew's death, it has shocked us. And so, in the shock of Matthew's passing, may they know your health. You are the living God. And so, may they and all of us put our hands into your hands, knowing that your hands are outstretched this afternoon. And you would say, come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so we give to you our times. And we would say, my times are in your hands. Father, we thank you for the love and care that Matthew received, for the loving care of family and friend and carers and classmates and staff and neighbours and so many friends. For all the acts of kindness that Matthew received, we give you thanks. We thank you for the memories that we have of Matthew. We remember the happy days. We remember times together. And so, Lord, we pray that in the days ahead, you would draw close to each one of us and that we would know your peace in our hearts. May your Holy Spirit comfort us and point us to Jesus and the hope that we find in Christ. We look to Jesus, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. And so help us to put our confidence for life and for death in Jesus who conquered death and who rose victoriously from the grave. And it's in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen.
We're going to stand the lovely to sing our second hymn, a lovely hymn. A hymn that reminds us that our times are in God's hands from life first to life to final bread. In Christ alone, my Lord is God.
sure you'll agree that Matthew lived a full and a happy life, and we have great memories to take with us and hold on to. We now go to take Matthew on his final earthly journey to his final resting place. And as we go, may we know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us. Amen.